particularly hilarious moment, maybe coordinated, I'm just joking, <laughs> a moment Funny when John Berman, CNN anchor on New Day, was talking with James Clapper, of course, former uh, DNI, who was intimately involved in this unmasking of Flynn and Russia Gate and went all over TV spouting a bunch of nonsense and then the transcripts and Mueller report came out and turned out none of what he was saying was true. Well, he was asked specifically whether he played a role in disseminating Flynn's name to the mainstream media, which is, of course, an illegal act and what spawned much of the Flynn Gate, Russia Gate conspiracies. And this is what happened. Let's take a listen. Leaking classified information, and by definition, these phone calls were classified. That's a problem, correct? Uh, absolutely, it is. Um, and if anyone did leak the contents of these conversations with or without the name, that would be a problem, yes? Uh, we've lost the shot. I wonder if we can at least get him on the phone to finish this. Let's try to get Director Clapper back. Perfect timing. Now look, <laughs> was it? I don't know. It's just Something funny. happened there. Yeah, it's, just, it, it, it's just funny. I mean, you can't make it up. Look, clap. This is the best part. Clapper is in the meeting with Trump, where he briefs him on the dossier. Him and Comey. And now for our Friday fact check. The president is calling it Obamagate, accusing President Obama and former Vice President Joe Biden of conspiring against Michael Flynn. But our own NBC investigation this week, as well as new reporting today in The Washington Post and The New York Times, prove that is not true. This week, President Trump's acting director of national intelligence, Richard Grinnell, declassified and turned over to the Department of Justice a list of Obama administration officials, including Obama and Biden, who had asked for the identity of the person who had been overheard on intercepts talking to the Russian ambassador after the November election. That person was Flynn. While the president and his supporters are claiming that such a request was part of a conspiracy to frame Flynn, in fact, those requests are routine. They're common. They occur thousands of times every year, including this year. When he became national security advisor, Mike Flynn went on to lie about what he had said about to the Russian ambassador, to both Vice President Pence and then to the chief of staff, Reince Priebus and then to Press Secretary Sean Spicer, and then to the FBI. That led to their recommending that the president fire him. He later twice pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI, until more recently withdrawing his plea and the attorney general then approving that the prosecution be dropped. A very unusual occurrence. Joining me now are Ben Rhodes, former Obama White House Deputy National Security Advisor, and Frank Figlusi, a former assistant. Trump whines and moans on Twitter after nobody but Fox will take his fake Obamagate scandal seriously. As his mismanagement of the coronavirus pandemic and a reeling economy set off alarm bells in President Trump's re-election campaign headquarters, Trump himself has been desperately searching for a new narrative with which to distract the nation and paint himself as a victim of elaborate democratic conspiracies. He appears to have settled on what he and MAGA world have uncreatively termed Obamagate, though it's not clear to anyone, let alone Donald Trump, what exactly Obamagate is or what the alleged crimes committed were, but one thing is for certain in Trump's mind, Barack Obama is guilty and the fake news media is in. Obamagate. Pelosi, Comey, Schiff, Obama and Biden. The deep state actors tried to impeach President Trump and throw General Flynn in jail. And they almost got away with it. President Trump is working. Hello, welcome to Planet America's Fireside Chat. I'm John Barron. I'm Chad Chidello. This week, Obamagate. President Trump says it's worse than Watergate. We'll take a look. We're going to have a lot to say about unmasking and not the surgical kind. And voting rights in the time of a pandemic. We'll find out what's being done to ensure access to the ballot in November and what's being done to try and block that access. But first, 
President Trump toured another face mask factory earlier today without wearing a face mask. This time it was in the swing state of Pennsylvania, where he announced plans to restock America's strategic reserve of protective equipment in the aftermath of this pandemic. And he is also blaming the Obama administration for not restocking after the 2009 swine flu. It was a pandemic in 2009 that was not well handled at all, got very poor marks. Never again will another president inherit empty shelves or expired.